So boiler rooms are filled with controls and safeties that essentially keep these systems running properly. And today on Steamworks, we're going to take a quick look at a few of the common controls found in most steam boilers. So as the burner is firing into the combustion chamber on a boiler, the system requires pressure switches to cut it out when it's satisfied or when it's, it reaches an unsafe pressure range. So here you can see the pressure controls on this high pressure steam boiler. And this is a fairly typical setup on these type systems. You have your uh, operating control, your modulating control, and your high pressure control. Now typical to a lot of boiler room functions, we, are, uh, we always want to have redundancy in our controls. Uh, in other words, we want to be sure that should one of these controls fail, that there's a backup that will ensure that the pressure ranges uh, are not exceeded. Now first let's take a look at our operating control. That's the one here in the middle. Uh, this control de-energizes the burner on a set pressure or temperature. It uses a differential setting, which is a set point where the boiler will cut back in when the system calls for heat. Think of this as your thermostat on your home's air conditioner. If your thermostat is set to 72 degrees, then when the temperature rises above this, it will energize the air handler and begin cooling. So if that temperature falls below that 72 degree mark because of ambient temperatures, then it will just remain satisfied and the system will stay in standby. And that's basically how the operating control works is on that same principle. This control is the first line of defense from an overpressurization. We set these with the highest pressure that we would want to see the boiler at any given time. Now backing up this operating limit is our high control or our high pressure limit. So this control is easily recognized because it will have an, a manual reset incorporated like we see here. Uh, if this operating limit doesn't cut out, then this circuit would open and shut the burner off. This manual reset serves as a prompt for the operators to then investigate why this overpressurization has occurred. So these controls have, uh, have a fixed differential and will be set above the operating limit and of course below the relief valve and maximum allowable working pressure of our vessel. Now the next control that we see here is our firing rate or modulating control. Our modulating control has a slide wire potentiometer inside which in most cases regulates the firing rate of our burner by way of a modulating motor. It has this bellow housing below at the bottom of the control which looks like a small can. Um, so pressure variations cause these brass bellows inside that housing to expand and contract which will then push and pull on that linkage between the bellows and the potentiometer. A good way to think of this control is much like the cruise control on our car. If we set the cruise control to say 70 miles an hour and we're riding along on a fairly flat terrain, our demand will remain steady. If we then come up on a hill and the car's computer will call for a bit more acceleration to maintain that speed that we've set the cruise at. And so of course it will then call for more fuel and go into like what we would call high fire. So the modulating control should be set so that the burner falls back to its minimum input before the operating limit cuts out in order to prevent the system from short cycling. A way to think about this is again to refer back to the way that your air conditioner works. If, if the house is not able to maintain that 72 degree set point for some reason, then the unit will cut on and cool until the temperature is satisfied and then drop out. Again, for some reason, if that temperature continues to rise too quickly, it may only sit for a minute or less and then call for air once again. If this differential is set too close, then it will just keep doing this over and over and over. And it would be better served to set that temperature lower in order to cool for longer and keep the unit from cutting on and off frequently or short cycling. So setting this control would be similar in nature as you would want to set this control to coordinate properly with your operating control. Otherwise the boiler would trip out on high pressure before it even makes it back down into low fire. Alright guys, well there it is. I hope this video was helpful and if you liked it be sure and hit that thumbs up button and otherwise we'll see you next week for another Steamworks.